Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and uh, I'm on one of my last stops uh, before uh, before uh, getting back to Ottawa. Um, I dropped my son off uh, tree planting uh, near Kenora, which is on the Ontario-Manitoba border, and uh, have been working my way back to Ottawa. And uh, right now, um, some of you may know where I am, given this uh, little... Uh, piece of uh, industry here. This uh, It's called the Inco uh, Super Stack. So I'm in Sudbury, um, nickel capital of the world, if you like. And uh, this thing is just enormous. Okay. Uh, and uh, let me just, I had to do a video just because of this uh, landscape. So I'm just going to um, scan around for you to see it. Um, I'll just turn. So there's the uh, super stack and uh, you can see actually lots of homes and uh, you know lots of lots of residential areas here you can see this um, I'm on the top of this uh, blackened uh, rock so this stuff used to be red but the um, before they put in the uh, super stack the uh, when, when you uh, take uh, ore and you smelt it to get the nickel out, there's lots of sulfur trapped in uh, the chemical compounds that form with the nickel. So you have to remove, to get the pure nickel metal, element 28 on the periodic table, you have to remove, uh, there's a lot of sulfur that you remove in the process. And the sulfur has gone on all the rocks in the area and basically uh, blackened them, given them a, a, a coating you know, they, they've chemically turned black on the surface and uh, trees wouldn't grow and vegetation wouldn't grow. So that's what the reason why they put in the uh, super stack, right? Because the idea is, uh, you know, instead of having all of the sulfur fall locally in this region, um, you send it up really high, over a thousand feet high, and then it dissipates and spreads to um, other places. And this was one of the reasons, uh, this was a big source of the uh, sulfur, which formed sulfur, sulfuric acid in the atmosphere and then fell into lakes. And if the lakes weren't limestone based, it would kill everything in the lake. So this was the acid rain problem. Um, and they basically solved that problem by putting scrubbers into the uh, smokestack and on smokestacks to, to uh, remove a lot of the uh, pollutants before they would go up. So before those scrubbers were put in, you could see the streams of smoke coming from the stacks. And, but, you know, supposedly it's a lot cleaner now uh, with the scrubbers. And they don't, uh, they're actually talking about removing, taking the smokestack down because they've got some shorter, more efficient smokestacks. Uh, but anyway, this is kind of famous or infamous for, uh, for, for Sudbury. So... I had to do basically a video uh, just showing you the landscape here and uh, after uh, you know the trees and the vegetation was killed around um, Sudbury they had this enormous uh, tree planting program and uh, they planted over uh, over three million trees within the, within the city. Um, it's very windy out here, and I just have this sweater on, my favorite sweater, so it's a little bit chilly, but uh, try to get a bit of shelter from the wind and talk a little bit more about the uh, mining industry. So the video I shot yesterday from Elliott Lake was all about the uh, uranium mining and the town and how it you know, went through a boom and bust cycle. Um, you know, Sudbury is one of the huge uh, nickel producers of the world. And we use nickel in, in everything, pretty much everything. And in fact, um, you know, most, uh, we, we call the, the five cent piece in, in uh, Canada, of course, a nickel. And it, it used to be made almost of pure nickel. And now it's just mostly nickel plated. But nickel has great anti-corrosion properties. So, uh, you know, you've heard, I'm sure you've heard of nickel-plated steel, and uh, you can nickel-plate just about any any metal, 
and uh, it makes it very a very hard durable surface um, and it's uh, anti-corrosion and it's also very uh, sterile so you know knives are often nickel plated uh, your cutlery um, cars you know parts that can't parts of cars are, are nickel plated to stop them rusting but you know nickel's very expensive and it's uh, you know fairly fairly heavy heavy metal so um, you know if you want a light uh, material light metal for for uh, you know cars or airplanes or whatever they go to you know other metals like aluminum and so on um, and uh, yeah yeah so um, there's a famous uh, Canadian photographer Edward Bertinsky I'm pronouncing his last name wrong and uh, if you look at some of his work he's gone and documented a lot of these industrial sites around the world you know he tries to bring out uh, you know sort of the the scale and the magnitude of the of, of the heavy industry around the planet and he spent time in in Sudbury documenting um, this particular region and uh, yeah so anyway uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, you're looking at basically the source of a lot of the, uh, you know, well, it's the biggest source in Canada of, of the um, sulfur dioxide, which then went into, uh, you know, caused the acid rain problem. And uh, that was, I think this, this smokestack, uh, the super stack was built in about 74, 1974, 1975 or so. And uh, with new technologies to scrub the... Um, the the um, effluents coming out of the smokestack, um, you know, they, they they say that the requirement for this to get to law, you know, I mean, basically these things, you you really want to, you you're basically using the philosophy that the solution to pollution is dilution, right? You you send it up high into the into the air, and then it spreads in the air currents uh, far and wide, and it's in very, very low concentrations far and wide, as opposed to uh, going up a small smokestack and then coming down, um, you know, right over the city. So in the past, uh, you know, often depending on the weather conditions, well, not often, but sometimes, you know, even with this uh, super stack, uh, if the if there were temperature inversions and things like that that uh, trap the pollution locally, it, you know if it doesn't spread very far, then it comes down. And like I said, it did it did a number. It basically destroyed the uh, vegetation and in the area and uh, trees. And there's all kinds of things in the uh, you know effluent. Uh, there there's heavy metals. There's there's lead, um, things like that. There's a lot of nasty things from from the smelting process. To convert the uh, you know the iron ore, or not the I iron, but the ore into uh, you know extracting the minerals, uh, you know in this case uh, you know nickel. So so, uh, but I you know I'm 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 kind of surprised that it turned all of the rocks in the city black. And uh, I know that during the uh, Apollo uh, program in the U.S. to launch. Uh, people to the moon, men to the moon. Uh, the astronauts uh, came to Sudbury to do some training and there's a misconception, like, you know, it's obvious why, it, why it's there, but there's a misconception that they thought Sudbury, uh, you know, with all the blackened rocks uh, seemed very much like a, a moonscape and it was perfect place for training the astronauts, but that's actually not the reason. Um, the reason why there's all this nickel in Sudbury is because of a, uh, a, a an impact, a bolide impact. Now, bolide is just a term for you know meteor, meteor, asteroid, or or meteor, um, which uh, you know travels through space. And this happened to hit Earth a few million years ago, or longer. And they think it may have been uh, you know even a, a comet, but you know something large hit hit this Sudbury region. And a lot of uh, a lot of space uh, bolides are, you know, high in nickel. So, you know, nickel uh, meteorites. So this was a big one. It hit Sudbury. It caused a huge impact. You know, it hit the rock. It it caused a lot of breccia and shatter shatter cones. Very very, you know, high stresses on the rocks and, 
you know, one of the, 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 the training of the Apollo um, astronauts, they were happening to go to a part of the moon where there were a lot of, uh, you know, similar type of uh, shattered rocks. So that was why the training was done here, because of the shattered rocks, not because <coughs> of the uh, blackened, <coughs> the bla the blackened uh, topography. But anyway, a lot of history, a um, lot of interesting history and uh you know this is uh this is a good uh you know good good place if you want to look at the effects of have heavy industry in canada on on uh cities so anyway i'm freezing my uh, butt off up here it's quite windy so i'll uh you know I'll, I'll i'll end my video here and thanks again for um for tuning in okay bye for now